I could have easily made this video probably like an hour long, but I controlled myself, narrowed down my list. So I have to share with you seven of my favorite companion series, romance companion series. So if you are not familiar what like a companion series is, it would be a series written by an author, all set in the same world, maybe following like a friend group or something, but each individual book follows a different couple. So like a couple doesn't get like four or five books in a series or like the whole series doesn't follow them. It's like you get one couple in one, another couple in another, another couple in another. And the nice thing about companion books is that often those can be read as standalone. So let's say like the fourth book in a series really interests you but the first three like don't you could jump straight to the fourth one some of these are like that one of these series eh, I am going to strongly advise that you read them in order but we'll get into it as we get into it and like I said I really narrowed down this list I had a lot more when I first created my list I think I had 17 series and I was like you're not talking about 17 series in one video so I narrowed it down to seven so I could definitely do a part two if y'all are interested but anyways without further ado let's jump in so first up let's start with one of my newest favorites and also I should just preface this I'm not gonna go super in depth on each individual book because even though I have seven series we got like what 30 something books to get through so I'm gonna keep them kind of brief but the Salacious Players Club series by Sarah Kate is first up on my list these are four books they all follow uh, a group of co-workers the owners of the Salacious Players Club and it's uh you know it's a spicy club that they all own and work at so first up we have praise so this one is X's dad age gap dom sub and boss employee so the heroine in this one is looking to get the security deposit back from her ex's dad from their apartment after they broke up and she shows up to his office and he mistakes her as his new assistant and doesn't realize that that is in fact his son's ex-girlfriend and they end up paying it off and she starts working for him and it's their romance then we have eyes on me this one is step siblings age gap and cam girl this one follows garrett another owner of the salacious players club and when he goes to like his family's lake house he sees his stepsister again that he hasn't seen in a while that he is kind of attracted to and then when he's casually scrolling through on a certain website he sees her camming on there and decides to start watching her then we have give me more this one is friends to lovers and mmf so this one we have a married couple and their best friend who when they are out road tripping looking at other potential locations for the salacious players club to expand their business um they end up you know testing things out while they're out on the road and exploring some of the attraction that the three of them have between each other and lastly my personal favorite in the series i freaking love this one and this one is reverse age gap dom sub uh dad's best friend so this one maggie is one of the owners of salacious players and she is really kind of deconstructing all of the beliefs that she had when she was younger regarding like sexuality and trying to explore her sexuality a little bit more and she ends up meeting Bo, who is emerson's son Son, and he's just like really lost and looking for a direction in his life he's got a lot of anger to work through and the two of them discover that they have similar interests and oh it's also dom sub but maggie's the dom and Bo is the sub <gasps> incredible next up i don't own these ones yet but uh the national neighbors series by nikki sloan so this one is four books i have read the first three i am actually quite literally going to be starting the fourth one as soon as i'm wrapping filming up this video so the first one is The Doctor, and this one is also, what is this, X's Dad, Age Gap, and Taboo Romance. So this one, our heroine, her boyfriend is kind of a loser, and she ends up wanting to sleep with his dad. I don't know what more you want. <laughs> Um, the second one, The Pool Boy. So this is a reverse age gap, best friend's son, musician, hero, and kind of workplace. So our heroine in this one, she finds her husband hooking up with someone else. She's getting a divorce and she is just trying to kind of like look to find herself again. And she ends up hiring a pool boy who happens to be her uh, best friend's son. And he is an aspiring musician. She works in the music business and they end up, you know, having a little relationship. The Architect, personally the hottest one in this series. And this one is MFM and BDSM, like very, very heavy into BDSM. So this one, our first hero and our heroine, they are next door neighbors and they kind of realize that maybe they have like some mutual interests, if you get what I'm saying. So our hero decides to kind of like show our heroine around, take her to a club, kind of like expose her to this lifestyle that she's interested in. And they end up kind of arranging like a bit of like a benefit situation. He travels off for work. She just wants to kind of like explore herself and they end up bringing in a third because the hero travels a lot. So he's like, let me bring in another guy that can kind of help satisfy you while I'm gone. But instead of him just doing it on his own with you, 
I'm going to be there every step of the way telling them what to do to you. Amaze. And the fourth one is the frat boy. I have not read this one yet. And I honestly can't really even recall. Like, I, I don't want to say like what tropes if I'm wrong about it. But um, I'm pretty sure these two in college end up like getting kicked out of where they're living and they have to move into like uh, a house that like makes a dull content together. I don't know, but I'm excited for it. So that's the National Labor Series. These ones are all just like legitimately hot. Like truly, if you're just looking for a really fun, spicy time, this series, look no further, get these. Next up, let's switch it up a little bit. Let's go old school. These are um, a little bit older, but if I know a lot of people have read some of Penelope Douglas's newer work, and if you wanna go back to the very beginning, go back to the Fall Away series, this series is amazing. As you can see, it's five books, but technically it's kind of following like three-ish couples, and I'll kind of explain. So all of these follow a group of, what was that? Dorian? Why does he think he needs to go in the cupboard with the garbage bags? I don't know. These all follow a group of friends slash a pair of brothers and their friend, I guess. I don't know. Uh, and all set in high school. So Bully, this first one is childhood friends to enemies to lovers. Bully, obviously. So this one, our hero and heroine, they grow up next door to each other. They have always really like been besties. And then one summer, the hero goes away. And when he returns, he is a totally different person than what the heroine remembers when he left. And he, instead of like being her friend again, like just starts bullying and harassing her. But it's finally what their senior year and she stops taking his crap and starts fighting back. Uh, then until you, so t this is technically 1.5. So Bully is all told from Tate's POV, the heroine. And then Until You is Bully told from Jared's point of view, but I promise you this is not just like a retelling. You get so much more story. It's not feeling like you're reading the same scenes just from a different perspective. Like this one like really enriches the story a lot and gives a lot of context to Jared. And then we have Rival, which is like book two. And this one is Step Siblings and Second Chance. The hero and heroine's parents married when they were in high school and something happened where our heroine ends up leaving and she goes to like a boarding school for a year and then she comes back and our hero is kind of like what did you do like why did you leave me what happened and it's kind of left reeling and she ends up revealing like what happened that caused her to leave what like kind of cracks they have in their relationship from then and then like healing that together i love it and Fallon's a badass then we have the third book my personal favorite so i don't really know what would even be like the tropes for this one like friends to lovers i guess maybe like opposites attract so the heroine in this one, she has always been like a good girl. She's always done the right thing, but then some things happen that keep her from getting into college. And then Jax, our hero in this one, is the brother or half brother of Jared from the first book. And he has always wanted Casey, but she has always said no and like turned him down. And he's like, I'm not going to take no for an answer. And he kind of has his own things that you get into, but this one is my personal favorite. So freaking good. And then the next plane, which is technically like what, 3.5? It's the last one. So the first part of it is a novella following one of the couples, like a second chance kind of deal. And then the last part is kind of like a preview into the Fall Away series, which is going to be a spinoff following uh, another sibling from the book that you got. Definitely like an OG from Penelope. Especially if you want to read the new series, Hellbent. Uh, Falls Boys is the only one out, but hopefully Pirate Girls will be out this year. No release date has been announced, but that one's going to be six books. So if you want to be reading that series and get the richest experience, then definitely read the Falling Away series. Okay, let's get a super duper popular series out of the way. But like I say all the time, I'm not going to not recommend popular books because I assume everyone has read them. Because not everyone has read all the popular books. And I have the Off Campus slash Briar U series. So I know this looks intimidating. Yes, it is eight books, but technically these four are a series and these four are a series. They just take place at the same place so you can like read them back to back kind of. So we're gonna start out with the Off Campus series though, which is my personal favorite. I have read these like what, three times now. Some of them are just comfort reads. Some of the earliest books I read when I was getting into romance and I just love them. This one follows a group of four guy friends all living at a house and they all play hockey together. So this first one, the deal, our hero and heroine, they kind of have like a bit of a not like fake dating, but kind of like a bit of an arrangement. Our hero is a star hockey player and he is in risk of failing a class where the heroine excels in it. He asks her to tutor him and in return, he agrees to kind of like give her some pointers slash kind of like fake date her a little bit. So that way the guy that she's eyeing up, one of the football players will kind of take notice of her. But then it also kind of turns, kind of turns into like lessons a little bit and like some healing. So good. Supreme friends to lovers kind of deal. Oh, these two are just like 
uh, to die for. And then the mistake, my personal favorite out of them all because John Logan, may he reign supreme. This one is like second chance, groveling, virgin heroine, bad boy hockey kind of deal. So our hero and heroine have an accidental run in when he's looking for a room on campus and he accidentally ends up at her room. They end up hanging out for a while, hit it off. Some things happen. Uh, he screws up big time. And then she ends up going to over to Paris for like the summer. And then when she comes back for the next semester, he really wants her back, but she's gonna make him work for it. Amazing, so good. The score, this one is kind of like what? Not like enemies to lovers, but just like really good banter. Like it's more like they playfully kind of like hate each other a little bit. And they're also like all in the same friends group. So the heroine in this one is best friends with the her heroine from the deal. And the hero in this one is obviously a part of like the guy friend group that we're all talking about. And the hero in this one, he comes from a rich family. He's very much like just kind of can do whatever he wants to do. She's an aspiring actress. It's fun. And then the goal is the last one in this one. This one is surprise pregnancy. So Sabrina in this one, she is very dedicated, very focused on school, very focused on becoming a lawyer and getting out of her circumstances when she has a one night stand with Tucker, the hot hockey player, just to kind of like reset herself, get herself off a little bit, you know, she's just trying to like have a good night. Well, she ends up pregnant and it's their romance. So yeah, that is the Off Campus series, love it. And then we have Briar U. So it takes place at the same university. Again, all hockey romances, but following different couples and kind of like a different year. So like those four guys have all graduated, they're off and running. And then now it's kind of like this new crop of people on campus. So first up we have the chase and this one is a brother's best friend in Grumpy Sunshine. So Summer is uh, Dean's little sister from the score and she ends up needing a place to live and she ends up living with some of the hockey guys and one of them is Fitz and he is just like this tattooed, quiet, gamer, nerdy guy and she's just very bubbly, outgoing, loves fashion kind of deal and they end up having a romance with them. Cute enjoyed it but this one is my favorite of it the risk so this one is fake dating and kind of like enemies to lovers so brenna really really wants to be in the hockey world and like working in it and be taken seriously but as a woman you know like it's kind of like a boys game and she just wants respect and to, in order to get like this one interview or something she ends up fake dating jake who is a rival hockey player because her dad is the coach at Briar U and Jake plays for Harvard, I think, which is like their rival team. Yeah, they end up fake dating and it's amazing banter in that one. To be honest, I barely remember what this one is about because this is my least favorite. Uh, so this one, they're classmates in it and it's like friends to lovers, but our heroine has a boyfriend for a lot of the time and I don't think that there's ever cheating, but it's just like a long time that they're just friends and like just sitting around waiting for her to dump this dude that like kind of sucks. Our hero in this one, he is like kind of on a celibacy pact and that's why like he doesn't really make a move on her for a while because he had screwed up in the last season with some girl issues and kind of like cost his team the season. So he's like, I'm not getting involved with any girls this season. I need to keep my focus on hockey but she ends up kind of like stealing his focus. And then lastly, the dare. So this one is a plus size heroine, friends to lovers. And what is it? Is it, is it fake dating again? So our heroine in this one, she's started off at school and she's just trying to fit in. And she, I think is she in a sorority? And she's trying to fit in and they dare her to seduce like this really, like the hot, hockey player on campus and he ends up you know like kind of going along with it and kind of helping her out a little bit but then also trying to like boost her confidence and just really becomes friends with her but then of course those friendship feelings end up turning into romantic feelings and it goes from there so yeah that is that whole series that's a lot of books i really enjoy those so if you're just looking for like fun hockey college times those are great. Okay, next up is The Voyeur Series by Fiona Cole. So it's actually six books. I only own two of them so far. So six books. All, oh, is this? Oh, maybe I should have split this up. Well, whatever. It's another one following another spicy club. But yeah, you know, I mean, who doesn't want spicy clubs? So first up, the first book in the series is Voyeur. This one is a student teacher, age gap, forbidden romance. So our heroine in this one, she is really short on money. And one of her friends is like, hey, if you want a job working at my uncle's club, Voyeur, I can get you a job to kind of help you get through school. So she ends up starting there as a performer. She's there. She starts getting this like reoccurring guest who really likes to watch her. And that's our hero. And then when they start class on the first day, our hero is like, oh my God, that girl 
girl that's sitting in the front row of my class is also the one that I love to watch at Voyeur and it's their romance. So fun. Then Lovers is book two and this one is MMF, Friends to Lovers, our hero and heroine, they're engaged to be married and they work together like they're very high powered business people and they've just always been very set. Like this is kind of what they've like been destined to do is like date, get married, take over their father's companies together, what have you. But neither of them are like passionate in love. They're more like, you know, they're really good friends that like love each other, but they're kind of like, is this all there is? When then our third hero or second hero, but third person in the relationship comes into play and he starts working with them on a project and it's kind of like second chance for the two heroes. Uh, they knew each other previously and they end up bringing him in as like a third in their relationship to kind of spice things up. But then it ends up, you know, not working out as like a three so it does end up going down to two by the end and then turns into mm which i mean like is kind of a spoiler but also i'm gonna talk about the fourth book which involves the heroine from that one so i mean you're gonna spoil i'm gonna spoil you anyways third book savior so this one is an age gap kind of like guardian ward ish so our hero in this one he tracks down people that are sex traffickers like he tracks down people on the dark web because his sisters to his twin sisters were taken and he was able to recover one but one uh was unfortunately killed when she was trafficked and he ends up finding this girl who's like about to be trafficked and he ends up saving her uh she was in a situation that she was trying to get out of underneath from her sister and her sister's boyfriend who like treat her really bad and steal all of her money she's like you know what i'm gonna auction off my virginity online but ends up putting herself in a bad situation that is when our hero rescues her and he takes her under his wing um because she is 18 so she's like legally an adult but she is kind of like on her own and doesn't really have anyone to help and it's their romance. Then the fourth one, another one of my favorites in the series and this one follows the heroine from book two. So this one is Surprise Pregnancy and uh, One Night Stand. So our heroine from this one, obviously she's just trying to rebound after her engagement failed and she ends up doing this like a boudoir photo shoot but she signs up to do it with like a mystery person and it happens to be this hot dude and when they end up at the photo shoot they end up really hitting it off having a great time but then they go their separate ways. Well she finds out she's pregnant and jump ahead a few months later they accidentally run into each other again when they are assigned he works for another company she works for her company and their companies end up like doing a joint project and they end up seeing each other and he sees her and he's like doing the math in his mind and he's like oh my god that's his baby and it's a romance so good then book five liar age gap uncle's best friend taboo forbidden romance this one our hero and heroine actually had a spicy little night together that you can read in a novella it's called watch with me that's within the series it's just like 20 pages of their like one night hot encounter and but then they go their separate ways because obviously like we can't do this i'm your uncle's best friend and like you're my uncle's best friend so they go their separate ways but then they reunite at like a family dinner or something and he is now encouraging her to apply for a job or for an internship with his company and she's like are, are you for real are you really not gonna like say anything or like try to make any move on me nope so she ends up like screw it i'm gonna take your internship and then they start working together and they can't deny each other's feelings and lastly is teacher and this one is friends to lovers and brother's best friend so how i had talked about the the hero from the third book how one of his sister how both of his sisters were trafficked but the one that was rescued this is her book and she is really wanting to she wants to just like kind of live a more normal life she wants to be able to have like a boyfriend and be intimate and just kind of like be with people like other people her age are and but to do that she needs to get over her fear and she ends up recruiting her brother's best friend to help her out with it and he offers to help her just like make her feel comfortable give her a safe space to like explore herself and get comfortable with doing that all again but he doesn't want his best friend to find out obviously because he doesn't want there to be like any weirdness between them but obviously they're just like lessons turn into love and it's cute and I love it but also hot okay so now we have the thickest of the two so technically this is two series intertwined I already have so if I if it seems like I'm going kind of fast with this one it's because I am but here's the thing I have an entire core Riley mafia reading guide video on my channel I'll find it and I'll link it and like down below I explain to you how to read this series because these matte ones down here these are called the born and blood series and then these top shiny ones up here this is the Kamora chronicles but they are interconnected and I highly 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 recommend reading them interconnectedly so if you don't want to watch a full video of like me explaining which order to read it on my instagram i have a highlight reel of how to read these in order so we're gonna start you start with born in blood and you start with bound by honor so all of these obviously are mafia books and this was 
This one is an arranged marriage age gap between rivaling families. So this one is between a Chicago mafia princess and the New York capo, AKA boss. And they end up getting an arranged marriage by their fathers to kind of like join their two families together. So this is your starting place. And then there is also Luca Vitello, which is his point of view for this book. I personally would not recommend starting with this one. And honestly, you can kind of read it whenever. I didn't read it until after I finished the whole series because I just wanted to be back with this couple again. And honestly, you can do that. I don't feel like you really get much like new stuff with it. So definitely highly recommend starting with this one. And then you go to Bound by Duty. So this is the Chicago mafia boss and his new wife they are both widows and it's an arranged marriage once again between the two of them but neither of them like really want it and he does not really seem fully recovered from his wife's death and she's like I can't live up to like a dead woman and it's their romance love this one and then we have bound by hatred one of my favorites in this series and this one is enemies to lovers and another arranged marriage so the heroine in this one is the younger sister of the heroine from the first one and our hero in this one is the younger brother of the hero from the first book. So you're getting like younger brother and younger sister in this one, but oh my God, they are explosive. They hate each other. The heroine in this one wants nothing to do with mafia life and she ends up running when she is set into an arranged marriage, but the hero is not having any of that and tracks that and tracks her down and finds her and drags her back to marry him. It's so freaking good. So again, Chicago and New York families again with that one. And then we have Bound by Temptation. So again, now we have the youngest sister in this one and her romance with a bodyguard that protects the husbands from the first two books. So again, we have New York and Chicago, but with the bodyguard in this one, he is not like a high ranking position and she is like a mafia princess. You know, she's the daughter of a pretty prominent family and obviously like the sister of sisters who are in like high ranking mafia marriages. So even though she really wants the bodyguard and she's seen him for a while and has had googly eyes for him for a while, it's an age gap too, like kind of forbidden because of their like age gap and how long she's wanted him. But uh, her father has other plans for her marriage. And then we have Bound by Vengeance. It seems out of place in this world a little bit, but it makes more sense with the Kimura Chronicles. So this one actually takes place out in Las Vegas. So in this one, our heroine's family was pretty high ranking, but then they end up being disgraced and her father is killed and she is then taken not like I mean she's kind of captive but she's more like given away in order like if she wants to live she's going to be taken away by one of the enforcers out there his name's growl and it's their romance so she's kind of like captor captive but I mean like she can't really leave mm, but I guess he didn't like steal her it was more just like hey you're gonna go with this guy or else you die so I don't know and the heroine of this one her family has distant ties to the New York mafia so that's how it kind of takes place so like Luca's family and then Bound by Love which is book six on this one this one is Luca and Aria's second book I'm not really gonna say more but you see some events take place from other books in this one from their POV and then Bound by the Past is Dante and Valentina's the couple from book two bound by duty this is their second book and again you're getting different things going on but more so with the Kimura Chronicles so this is all of the Born and Blood but then we get into the more Kimura Chronicles which are my personal favorite I love these books ride or dies ride or die books for me will forever be faves so Twisted Loyalties, which is book one. So the three heroines that I talked about, the three sisters that married the guys in the New York Mafia from the Chicago Mafia. So they had a younger brother, Fabiano. You see things happen with him that uh, you see that he has reasons to flee Chicago and he ends up fleeing to Las Vegas and taking refuge there and he becomes their enforcer out there. And Las Vegas and Chicago do not get along. And Las Vegas and New York... They don't not get along, but they definitely don't like, they're not like friends either. It's more just like they both hate Chicago. So I guess they have that in common. But he ends up falling in love with just like a regular girl and it's their romance, but it's obviously forbidden. Like that's not allowed. Then we have book two, one of my favorites, Twisted Emotion. So our heroine in this one is the cousin of Luca the mafia boss from Chicago. And she has had some pretty traumatic things happen in her childhood, but she is offered up as an alliance between Las Vegas and New York because obviously they want to strengthen ties to go against Chicago together. So they get in an arranged marriage and Nino is the second in line to the Las Vegas boss. And he has like no feelings, no emotions whatsoever. And it's their arranged marriage. It's beautiful. And then we have Twisted Pride, my personal favorite in this series, electric, electric shit. So Serafina is a mafia princess of Chicago and it is actually her wedding day when Remo the crazy capo from Las Vegas steals her 
and kind of starts a bit of a war. It's a bit of a retaliation, which you know why he's retaliating. I'm not going to say it now. You can read and find out. But he's retaliating when he kidnaps her and it's Captor Captive and it's their love story and it's amazing, amazing banter. Twisted Bonds is just Nino and Kiara's second book from Twisted Emotions. You get into them further. I don't really need to get into anything so that would be spoilery. Twisted Hearts is the third brother from the family. So the first two brothers had the other books and then this one is Savio's book and it's a brother's best friend and age gap. He really wants his best friend's youngest sister and she wants him but like certain things come up and get in the way and certain people get in the way and it's fun. And then Twisted Cravings, this is the youngest brother out of, so it's the four brothers and he's the youngest and he really just wants to like race his car. He doesn't really want to have a lot to do with the mafia business. And so he does then like organized car racing where he ends up meeting the heroine and she is a car racer and she is from the Russian mafia. Uh, so again, it's like not even just like feuding families, it's like it's like big feuds you know going on it's their romance so yeah like i said kamar chronicles is definitely my favorite you could just jump into those without reading uh the born and blood chronicles however i would highly recommend following my little reading order you're gonna get the best experience out of it this way okay that was a lot but we're gonna end up on three little ones so if you just need something short quick spicy to the point but also fun the campus tale series by qb tyler i have the first two here so first semester, this one is a student teacher, age gap, one night stand kind of romance. So our heroine on this one, she is fresh off of a breakup after studying abroad. She comes back home before she starts her first semester off at school and she decides to bump up her age on a dating app to like meet someone like a little older, a little more distinguished. She ends up meeting our hero. They have a great one night stand. And then when she shows up to class on the first day, he's her teacher amaze second semester this one is the sister of the heroine of the first book and this one is dad's best friend age gap boss employee romance so our heroine in this one she always follows the rules she does whatever she's supposed to do and she now has an internship at her dad's company but he she's working directly for his best friend and business partner so that way like she's not reporting to her dad they are attracted to each other and they want to be together and it's hot and fun and kind of forbidden and then spring semester so this one is friends to lovers and cheating so our hero and heroine on this one they have been best friends since they were like kids and they've gone back and forth of like being together not being together but it's always kind of like one of them wants to be with each other when the other one doesn't so it's just never been the right time and finally when they decide like oh it's gonna be our time to be together something pops up and kind of disrupts all of that and there's some cheating and it's messy but it's so fun so anyways okay that was a lot of talking I thought this would be a long video and it did turn out to be a long video but anyways those are seven of my favorite companion series like I said, I have tons more. So if you guys want a part two, I can definitely do another part to this at some point. I also plan on doing some of my favorite standalone romances and my favorite series following one couple because that's my personal favorite is when they follow one couple. So anyways, that is it for today's video and I will see you when I see you.